Welcome to Spotlight. I'm your host, Amita. Join me weekly as we talk to guests who will inspire us with their success stories and inspirational events. Well, do you have it in you to take the road less traveled to materialize your passions and dreams? Well, our guest today has it in him, and he's making a positive impact with the multiple hats he wears, including entrepreneur, digital marketer, speaker, published author, and the founder of Desi Fest, one of Canada's biggest celebrations of South Asian urban culture and beyond. It's my pleasure to welcome to our show, Mr. Satish Bala. Satish, it's amazing to have you here with us today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. And congratulations. It's 12th year for Desi Fest, I understand. 12 years, yeah. Nice. Time flew. So we'll get to that in a bit, but let's get to know you a bit more. Okay. Tell us a little bit about who you are, where you come from, and how has your journey been thus far? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm a classic immigrant story. You know, born in India, uh, left to Singapore when I was four. And then most of my memories started in Singapore. So sometimes when people are like, where are you from? My first instinct is like, Singapore. And then, and then they're like, no, really, where are you from? Like, oh, shit, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm from India. Uh, so from South, Chennai. Mm -hmm. uh, and then my parents moved here in the late 80s. And uh, very quickly, I fell in love with Canada and the way uh, they look at people that are not um, following the same path, for example, mm. right? So, mm. you know, I wasn't always the smartest academic kid, yeah. uh, and I was very creative from a very early age. But, you know, being a South Indian family, you know, they didn't understand what creativity was. It was either mm -hmm. you're smart or you're a troublemaker. Oh, yeah. And it was only until we moved to Canada where troublemaker got redefined as creative and passionate and entrepreneur. And then I started believing in those things. And I was like, okay, so, you know, how can I now flourish in that? And so, mm. you know, from a very early age, I've always been sort of building my own path uh, through high school, then to university. Uh, I studied computer science, um, mm. probably one of the only things my father and I agreed on. Uh, I was like, no engineering, no accounting, but I can live with computer science. And I really okay. thought I was going to be a game developer because I was into okay. video games back then. Okay. Uh, and then first day in Ryerson, I realized there's nothing to do with game design here. This is really hard mathematical stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Almost wanted to drop out, um, but I fell in love with technology and, and the mm. impact of smart technology in the world. Uh, and, you know, every year I started getting more and more comfortable in becoming uh, more creative and more outspoken. Um, I got lucky by chance where uh, third year university there was an opening for student body president within computer science. Mm. And uh, somebody was like, look, we've never had an Indian person run for this stuff. You know, mm. why don't you try? And so that was my probably first stint in marketing and advertising where I built a little campaign around, you know, voting for me. And, and I won with, uh, with uh, you know, uh, a big vote. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was my first sort of, you know, pulled into entrepreneurship where all of a sudden I'm behind the scenes in the academic world. You know, I'm presenting to faculty, I'm presenting to the dean, I'm networking with the students, I'm, I'm communicating other things than just school and education. Mm. And I was naturally good at it. And I was like, okay, I've never explored this side. Um, so that put me on this journey for entrepreneurship, whatever that meant, because I didn't know what it was called other than every time I did something on my own, um, I was extremely scared. And then I did it anyways and then learn a lot about myself. And that became an addictive cycle for me of how many different things can I try that will put a spotlight on, on my own self, you know, belief and, and uh, self value. And, and that was my journey into entrepreneurship. Love it. So there were the challenges that usual like South Asian families uh, pose on their children, but you didn't let go of that pull within you. And when you saw that first opportunity, you seized it and used it to your maximum. Yeah. Uh, were there any challenges thereafter once you, uh, you know, you knew which path you were taking? Were there any challenges thereafter from mainstream? Like, as you said, you were the yeah, first yeah. Uh, brown person to well, yeah. The interesting thing is, you know, uh, especially in Canada, the digital world mm -hmm. is only about 10, 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And so prior to that, the stereotypical vision of a South Indian mm -hmm. is you're some IT guy from India. Mm. Either you're here on some sort of a, a work visa or, you know, you represent a company back home. Mm. And so, you know, I was building a creative agency doing branding and marketing and advertising. Um, yes, we were a technical team, but really we're a creative agency. Mm -hmm. And so most of the time, 
you know, uh, when there was a, another person in the room that wasn't South Indian, most people by default thought they were the owners or they were the creative mm. folks. And so it took, took a while for me to sort of get into the industry and start to educate people that, yeah, not all of us are technical folks. There are mm -hmm. South Indians that are creative, South Indians that are, you know, artistic, South Indians that are, you know, strategic. And so this blanket stereotype was a big issue, mm. especially in the early days of my first few companies. Um, and they didn't give us much room to play in bigger stuff because we were always pigeonholed into like, go build a software or go build a website. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to be the creative thinker and really help brands, you know, globally expand their customer base. And so that was one of the biggest hurdles. Um, but, you know, that was the outward hurdle, but behind the scenes, it was the same at home because, you know, uh, from whether it's my parents or their friends or other people, there was this notion to like, uh, get a real job. Yeah. You know, I know it's fun and you're doing this stuff on your own, but you have a computer science degree. When are you going to get a real job? Mm -hmm. You know, even till now, I think my mom still thinks I run a, you know, hardware repair store because I still get old aunties calling me help with like <laughs> windows and PCs. And I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, but there's a stereotypical vision mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, our, our, our community is very much academic and, and, and not much creativity. Mm -hmm. And so that was a lot of hurdle in the early days. Um, but like I tell anybody, you know, when you do good work and it's quality work, eventually that noise goes away. Very true, and right. that's exactly what you've done. You're such a trailblazer, trendsetter, inspiration with everything uh, that you've accomplished. So we want to touch upon that, including DC Fest. But let's take a short break. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Spotlight. We are talking to the recipient of the Young Entrepreneur Award in 2004 by the Tamil Chamber of Commerce, and also the recipient of the Hottest Startup by Profit 50 in 2004. It's Mr. Satish Bala. So, so inspirational to hear your story where, again, you were thinking outside the box with all the challenges you had to face, and you're here where you are today with such amazing portfolio behind you and so many, so many more projects to look forward to. Let's first of all start up with Desi Fest, the 12th year. Once again, congratulations. Yes, thank you. Tell us what it's all about. Yeah, so Desi Fest uh, is a two sided coin. So, one side, we're a free outdoor music festival, mm -hmm. and our vision was to create a platform where, regardless of what culture, what language, what background you're from, we can all come together at the square to celebrate just being South Asian and in Canada. Mm. Uh, when I got into the scene, I felt like a lot of the events that were happening had a undertone of culture or religion based on where you're from. Mm. And because, as I said, you know, born in India, grew up in Singapore, landed in Scarborough, while I was cultural, I never fully understood the culture. Mm. And so it was hard for me to go to any of these events and feel at home. Mm. because I was so integrated already. So we thought, well, why don't we create an atmosphere? Uh, they see in Sanskrit, it just means people. There's no color, religion, origin behind sure. it. And what if we create an atmosphere where, whether you're in a mixed relationship, whether you're you know, from India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, whether you speak English, Tamil, Gujarati, whatever it is, let's just celebrate being you know, Desis, mm. and especially in Canada. So um, that was one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is, you know. Uh, young people have taken the culture and remixed it themselves, to themselves. You know, our sure. parents did a great job of bringing us here, which is a great golden ticket, because mm -hmm. this is the best place to live in. But at the same time, they have to hand over the culture to the young generation and say, okay, here's the ethics and beliefs of the culture, but now you take it and make your own. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the music that the kids were creating in the last eight to 10 years reflected their struggles growing up in Canada, being a mixed generation. There was no outlet. If it wasn't Bollywood, we weren't booking them. So sure. we felt like there was a space that needed to be created for this energy to, to express itself. If not, it's going to be anger and implosion versus you know, sharing and awesomeness. Very well said, yes. And so, so we created the second side, which is to celebrate this group of people that weren't fitting in. Mm. And, you know, I wasn't fitting in, so I felt really connected to that community. And so that's what AC Fest stands for, you know. Uh, at, at our core, we want to use music as a way to eliminate stereotypes, gender bias, cultural biases that uh, hinder young people in our community to live their dreams. 
Very well said. And we really need that these days. There's a lot of uh, negative energy that yeah. the, uh, you know, the youth uh, can get pulled towards. Yeah. And this is kind of like a good platform, a good outlet. And the concert is, I guess, just one side of it, but it sounds like it's a whole... Yeah, yeah, it's yeah a, the concert is a yeah. reflection of the values, right? Yeah. You know, if, if I wasn't a DJ and I was growing up, if I was a painter, this festival would have been something different. Mm. Either way, we would have had some variation of a Desi Fest because I felt like I needed to help solve a small problem. Um, and, and, you know, when we let the young people speak, uh, and we actually listen to them. They have tons of great insights on problems that they can solve that me at my age can't do it anymore. Wow. And so having a platform for them to be who they are is really important. And the second thing I tell parents all the time is, you know, there's a survival mode that makes us into, you know, uh, uh, immigrants that want to live and work and just focus on living. Mm. But we can't do that at the expense of our art and music and poetry. Like, Love it. nobody ever remembers the bridge we built. We remember the stories and the songs and the poems that we write and the paintings we enjoy. They so, stay with you forever. Right. And yes. We go to India for these like, you know, inspirational meditation weekend weeks and stuff. Um, but it's the same content that could be produced here. It's right and, here. And we need right to in our backyard. So uh, tell us a little bit uh, about some of the memorable moments from prior DC Fest. Yeah, so every single year, man, there's a, there's a storyline that, you know, gets baked into it. Uh, whether it's having, you know, uh, like an Apache Indian come perform in our show, uh, whether it's knowing that both of my kids are born into the festival, you know, and they've been on stage with me from, from the day that they were born, knowing that it's a family group that works on it together, uh, knowing that every artist that's ever been on our stage has become a really good advocate for the next generation and giving mm -hmm. each other opportunities. Knowing that from you know, uh, year one, we supported over 300 artists across the country. We've paid out you know, two to three million dollars in fees and expenses right. to support the community. We've got a great sponsor network that believes in why we do it. Nice. Which so is that's, really important. That's why it's also a free concert. Exactly, because we, you know, uh, money is the easiest excuse to have in hurdle. Oh, I can't go. I can't afford it. Oh, Very it's ticketed. True. I don't know who's on the lineup. This way, we're like, drop your stereotypical thinking. Drop your biases. If you are at Daisy Fest, even for one hour, mm -hmm. you'll experience enough varieties that you'll start to question your belief system. Mm -hmm. And if we can poke a hole in something that you thought was really true, then what other things can we enlighten you on? Whoa. That's amazing. Well, I have been at Pride DC Fest and it's like uh, the whole atmosphere is so uh, a family oriented, uh, enjoying music, letting go of all the barriers, the restrictions yeah. of man-made society. So I love going to it every year. What can we expect this year? So, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so yeah. this year is really interesting because uh, we've always wanted to be a global showcase. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's funding or whether it's talent, it's always been a challenge. But this year we've got artists from UK, India, Pakistan, all across Canada, uh, West Indies, um, and it's total uh, Desi inspired music. Nice. And we have a blend from Bollywood all the way up to urban hip hop. Nice. And it's all inspired by South Asian undertone. And so for us, this is the first year where we're truly a global showcase. Mm -hmm. I'm really proud of the team for helping us get here. And that's what we want to represent. We want to represent this idea that wherever you are in the world, mm -hmm. music unites, unites all of us. Yes. And for that three and a half, four minute length of a song, uh, it doesn't matter you know, where you're from, what your gender is, what your biases are, because we're just one people listening to the same content. And I heard a quote a couple of days ago that you know, we don't listen to music, mm -hmm. we react to music. Because mm -hmm. you never really listen to it. It's a, it's a, it's a reactionary tool. True. When you're low, you find the song to bring you up. When you're high, you find the song to get you Very even true. higher. And so if music is a reaction, then we feel like Daisy Fest has been a reaction to a culture that didn't have a voice. Wow, profound. So where can we find more information? It's happening. Follow you, first of all. Follow you're, me. You're, <laughs> you're a great Follow. social ambassador for us. <laughs> uh, but DaisyFest.ca has got all the information. Uh, you can Google us. We're on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Um, and we encourage everybody to come experience it. Even if you can come for an hour, we're right on the subway line. Younger Dundas Square is beautiful. Beautiful as day. A venue, it's going to be, right? yeah. Uh, and to be in the heart of the city and celebrating whatever your personal version of your culture is, it's a really important step because it's not just about us anymore. It's about the next generation. And we don't have any tools to hand down culture yet. Mm -hmm. But this is one way to go. Here's a version of us. 
Yes, so it's happening on June 2nd at Young and Dundas Square, and it's a free concert. Come, come out with your family and friends and enjoy it. Well, I'm looking forward to it. But there's more to know about Mr. Satish Bala <laughs> beyond Desi Fest. So let's find out more. But before that, it's time for a short break. Welcome back to Spotlight. We are talking to an amazing entrepreneur who was the recipient of the recent Ryerson Alumni Award. It's Mr. Satish Bala. So this is great. Desi Fest is happening on June 2nd at Young and Dunda Square in its 12th year. Yes. But we know you're beyond Desi Fest as, I mean, you do so much other stuff as well. So highlight some of those for us. Sure. Um so as you mentioned, the award, that was a, uh, an awesome, you know, uh, award because, as I said, I've always been concerned about my academic challenges in life, always been shy about, you know, not being the smart kid. Uh, and so being back at Ryerson, being a mentor with the Zones and helping other startups build their own businesses and being recognized as an alumni was a really awesome experience. And having my mom at the reception was great. Nice. Um, so that was really good. Um, and, you know, I, I, had, I had an agency that I sold. Uh, in 2016, um, and so you know, I'm, I'm sort of looking at uh, what are all the different things that uh, me and my network that we built over the last 10 years do to help other young entrepreneurs. Mm. And uh, as you we were chatting, you know, offline, uh, so many times we create these hurdles in our head, and mm. they're all made up by us, right? In mm. today's digital world, you can reach anybody, you can negotiate globally, you can work longer sitting in your bedroom. Like there's no real hurdles anymore like there were when I was growing up. So, you know, I believe uh, almost anybody who's got an idea for success, whether you have a nine to five job or you want to do a side hustle on the side, whatever it is, uh, anything that you think you can't do is in your head. And nine out of 10 times, is the self-imposed labels that we've got. I'm an introvert, I'm an extrovert, I'm a scientist, I'm not a biz dev guy, I'm a biz dev, it doesn't matter. Those are just labels mm -hmm. and I grew up at, you're dumb, you're not smart, you're gonna mm -hmm. be a blue collar, not gonna be anything useful in life. And that was my labels for the first 14 years. Sad but true. Yeah. Right, yeah. but that was just given by people. Mm -hmm. And then I chose mm -hmm. at 15 to change it to, I wanna be a motivator, I wanna be an entrepreneur, I wanna be a businessman, I wanna be a musician. Nice. And that's how people look at me today. Mm -hmm. But I was the same guy. It just decided what I want to do in life. And so, you know, I think uh, what I want to do, hopefully, for the rest of my career is to find ways to help people do that, whether it's through Desi Fest, whether it's through my not for profit work under UMA Foundation, whether it's the mentoring I'm doing through Ryerson. Um, and, and, you know, God's been good as a family, we're, we're taken care of. Uh, my wife is, you know, behind the scenes at Desi Fest and runs the project. The better uh, half. Yeah, the... <laughs> so I literally get to show up on stage and do what I do. We've got a fantastic team behind us that does all the, the little pieces that count at the end mm. of the day. Um, so I've been blessed to have a great support team. Nice. And I would love to take, you know, the support team and the address books and the insights and try to help as many young South Asian entrepreneurs as possible uh, live their dreams. And, you know, this is 2018 and we still have... Uh, very few South Asian entrepreneurs that we can celebrate. Sure. And we're not talking about guys that are taking over their parents' businesses. And okay, I know they hate the, when I say that. <laughs> yeah. It's cool, like you're taking over the family business. Yeah. I'm talking about the young person who's staying up all night trying to build a unique okay. business with very little support. Mm. And so, you know, if your viewers are out there watching, find me on social, find me on, on, on websites and email, because that's the kind of help that we want to be able to offer mm. in the next eight to 10 years and it'd be great if, you know, five years from now we reconnect and now we talk about the five big startups that are Indian owned that came out of Toronto mm. or the three other Desi festivals that have started or the unplugged nights that are in the city or the record label that got launched or the TV radio programs that have mm. evolved. Like there's so much gap. And I think the, your viewers and the young people have the passion to fill the gap. Mm. And, and all we could do is help them. But, but we are lucky to have leaders like you, role models like you. So we are glad you went from Chennai to Singapore <laughs> to Scarborough. And, you know, you are actually inspiring all of us here and with everything that you do. And uh, we need those leaders like you. It's like, uh, it's like that hurdles that you went through. A lot of us go through it, but we don't know where to turn yeah. to. I mean, uh, people like yourself, amazing. You're blessed. You have it within you, that passion uh, that comes through and you go for it. But some of us then, you know, listen to the outside world yeah. and get bogged down by it and then 
cut off our passion. So yeah. we are grateful for inspirational role models like you to, you know, lead us and to guide us as well. So yeah, it's and, amazing. And equally, I was inspired by a bunch of people before me to get to where mm -hmm. I are. So it's always a cycle. It's just, each you know, people like myself and you and other people, we need to open our doors up, mm -hmm. even though it could be infringing and imposing, but that's our duty as immigrants that are passing on success stories, well said. right? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, if we are not open, then the cycle will continue. Very and well I think said. we have a chance in the next eight, eight to 10 years to really build a strong South Asian community across all of these cycles from business to arts to entrepreneurship to, you know, everything else that we aspire to be. Very well said. Wow, you do so much. There's so much on your plate. <laughs> I have to wonder, do you have any time for yourself? I, I know family is in the picture as a part of every project you do, but just away from projects, away from helping others. You know, uh, it's, it's, I never look at it as, as a burden because um, I just love everything I do. Nice. So it's never been about, oh, I'm doing this and I got to take a time off and do this. Nice. For me, it's always been an absent flow of what captures my interests. Mm. You know, uh, when I was building the agency, I was doing 20 hours of that. Once wow. I sold it, I'm a lot more home now. My wife probably hates it. Um, <laughs> and I've got passions that take me up and down. So I think, you know, in today's world, we got to live based on passion mm -hmm. and decide what sacrifices we're willing to make because we get one shot at chasing whatever the dream is. Nice. Well said, yeah. Right? Yeah. And so for me, it's never about turning off. It's about knowing where my attention needs to be and when. Mm. And then if I'm with the kids, I'm with the kids. When I'm mm. out on a date night with my wife, we're on date night. Nice. When I'm working, I'm 100% working. Nice. So it's about living in the moment. And yeah. it's like they say, when you do what you're passionate about, it's not work. Yeah. It's life. And, and why would you want to do anything else? We don't get to reset time. We don't get to mm. go, oh, now that I figured out what I want to do for the first 40 years, let me restart. Mm -hmm. Right? And, you know, uh, the minute we're born, we're dead. That that's just the nature of life. Mm. And so whatever time we have in between, the, when we understand that philosophy, we take our time more seriously. And then why would you want to do anything other than what you're passionate about? Nice. So many profound words of wisdom today, Satish. Quotable. Thank you no. so much. You know, quote, unquote, quote, unquote. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming and talking to us. I mean, about everything, uh, your life journey that has inspired us. And we wish you all the best for this Thank you. fest this yeah. year. And there should be no excuses. We're a 12-hour show. So I don't care if you're busy in the morning. Come in the afternoon. Yes. So we are going to be there. And yeah. th we wish you all the best. And Thank every you for best me. to your team as well. Appreciate Thank you. It. Thank you. So that was Mr. Satish Bala, who has inspired us to go after what speaks to us. So let's be there at Young and Dada Square on June 2nd for Desi Fest 2018. Well, that's a wrap for this week's show. Thank you for watching us. Continue to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and write to us at spotlight at ethnicchannels.com. Until next week, this is Amita signing off, encouraging you to support all our entrepreneurs and support yourselves towards positive change in the world.